Tarot Card of the World The World 21. is the 21st trump or major arcana card in the tarot deck. Remember the tarot deck is split into two, the major arcana and the minor arcana. The minor arcana with four suits of ten numbered cards and four court cards is essentially terrestrial, mundane. Pentacles, the 14 cards, Cups with 14 cards, Swords with 14 cards, and Wands with 14 cards. The Major Arcana is essentially celestial, spiritual. Thus, the World Tarot card is on the cusp of the two, the culmination of the spiritual path for all those from the minor arcana, but it is the start for all those who have become immortals and thus joined the major arcana. The Elements In the traditional Tarot of Marseille, or the later Rider Waite tarot deck, a naked woman dances within a circle formed by leaves. Nakedness in this context symbolizes her spiritual state. To be clothed, she would be classified as still mundane, but to be naked means she is spirit. She is at the center of the four corners, and each corner is filled by four living creatures outside the wreath. These four creatures symbolize the elements, earth, water, air and fire. As such, she has passed beyond the elements, the mundane, and has entered the center. According to astrological tradition, earth, the bull or calf, is Taurus, an earth sign. Water, the eagle, is Scorpio, a water sign. Air, angel, is Aquarius, an air sign. Fire, the lion, is Leo, a fire sign. So let us now turn to the map of the cosmic egg. These elements are the outward court. Fire, red. Air, yellow. Water, blue. Earth, green. A person tackling the spiritual path figuratively does so within these mundane elements, and this is Lightseer's Three of Cups. The cards in the Minor Arcana describe the successes, and this is Alistair Crowley's Three of Cups. All trials and tribulations he or she may be faced with, and this is Alistair Crowley's Five of Cups. And the suits of the Minor Arcana Pentacles, swords, cups and wands correspond with the elements. But until one has figuratively reached the inward court, one has not figuratively finished the spiritual path. All the roles in the major arcana perform some helping function, except the fool, who is so spiritually remote he is inaccessible. But all those struggling on the path and in the minor arcana, left, may well meet a spirit from the major arcana, right, who provides assistance. 
but they will probably never be aware they had angelic help. It is worth adding that the lion, eagle, bull and angel are common symbols and appear in texts of Second Temple Judaism, in rabbinical Merkaba, the chariot literature, in Christian mystic texts, in the Zahar, and in the Book of Revelation in the New Testament. The Wreath As can be seen from the map of the Cosmic Egg, there is a very definite abyss or block to progress between the inward and outward courts, shown by a thick black line. In some decks, this block is shown by a wreath. But in other decks, the block is depicted as an Ouroboros, biting its own tail. This is possibly more accurate, as energy is indeed recycled via this figurative abyss. Only Alistair Crowley's card shows the naked figure still in ascension up a celestial pole, with a distant, smaller centre. He called this card the universe, showing there is still a long way to climb before one gets to the inner court. Salvador Dali, Alistair Crowley and Tav Both Salvador Dali and Alistair Crowley incorporated the Hebrew letter Tav in their cards. In Alistair Crowley's card, it is found on the right of the name for the card, the universe. In Salvador Dali's unusual card, it is found on the left of the name, at the top of the card. The Midrash is a book of Jewish textual interpretations which aim to discern value in texts, words and letters as potential revelatory spaces. The Midrash explains that Emmet is made up of the first, middle and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, Mem and Tav. And Tav is the last letter of the Hebrew word Emmet, and Emmet means truth. Neither Crowley nor Dali were Jewish, but both saw the value of indicating that the truth is only to be found from those in the major arcana by revelation. The Dali Card Salvador Dali is possibly the only artist to represent the elements from above, from within the inward court. He uses the mauve purple colour to symbolically represent Sahasrara, the area beyond the body and the mundane and within the inward court. It is true some tarot designers use purple and blue to hint at the connection, but Dali doesn't just hint, he immerses you in a deep reddish purple. A rectangle symbolically represents the mundane world, that of the elements, and Dali shows it as a place of misery and darkness, where its inhabitants are collectively represented by a desperate face, struggling to break free. But we also see three naked figures, goddesses, who are also not free. Bound by chains to the mundane, they are obliged to assist and make sure the script of this theatre of the mundane is executed. The three goddesses are Hera, Athena and Aphrodite. And Dali used the image from Lucas Kreich, the Elders, Judgment of Paris. The story around which this card has been built has our three goddesses asking Zeus to declare who is the fairest. But Zeus, being wise, refuses to say and delegates the task to Paris, a mortal. Paris decides it is Aphrodite 
Venus, and she gives him the love of the fairest mortal woman alive, Helen of Troy. And thus is launched the ten-year Trojan War over the countenance of a woman. What Dali is showing is that every event in the celestial acts out on earth in the mundane, and it can be caused by the gods and goddesses who simply follow the script, providing the route by which life on earth plays out. Oswald Worth's Card Oswald Worth, as shown, was a Swiss occultist, artist and author. His interests include Freemasonry and astrology. He studied symbolism with Stanislas de Guiette, shown, and in 1889 they created a tarot, the Worth de Guiette deck. Worth accompanied the cards with an explanation published in English as the Tarot of the Magicians. In his explanation for the card, the world, he explains that we do not perceive reality. See video concept of reality. And because we don't, it is as if we were in Plato's cave, watching a shadow show put on by the helpers of the major arcana. We are still not in the light beyond, and the major arcana are simply voices in our ears, dreams and visions. Oswald Worth, The Tarot of the Magicians, English Translation, 1985, Samuel Weiser. Reality is not limited to what comes within our senses. These senses are instruments, adapted not to the real world, but only to the deceptive materialism of the poor sublunar world in the illusory dusk from which we struggle. Of what exists we see only the dying surface, made up of cinders about to harden and become relatively immobile in an apparent illusory materialization. Thus the uninitiated never know of the existence of the spirits, the puppet masters, that are manipulating events. And they know even less of the scriptwriter and director that ultimately controls it all. Oswald Verse card has all the symbols so far described, the four living beings representing the elements, namely angel, the bird, the bull, and the lion. The wreath, abyss, the use of the letter Tav, and the naked figure. But in the figure's hand is an upside down measuring tool, with a red knob and a plain knob to denote contrast. In William Blake's mythology, Urizen is the embodiment of conventional reason and law. He is usually depicted as a bearded old man bearing architect's tools to create and constrain the universe, or nets with which he ensnares people in webs of law and conventional society. And we see these nets in Crowley's tarot too. And Crowley uses the sign for the planet Saturn to emphasize the idea of a constraining, logical, rational, creative force. The Lightseer's Tarot There is one final card worth exploring, because it introduces platonic solids as symbols for the elements, and it is found in the Lightseer's Pack. Greek philosopher Plato used the already existing concept of five perfect solids to connect the mundane world to the celestial world. The five solids each present the same face no matter how they are rotated. 
and these shapes are used in the Lightseer's world card to convey the idea of the elements. Earth equals a cube. Water equals an icosahedron. Air equals an octahedron. Fire equals a tetrahedron. The fifth shape he called the dodecahedron, and it was essentially invisible to us. Today, we might call it dark matter. Thus, if you were to ask, but why can't we perceive these beings in the major arcana, when we can perceive everything in the minor arcana, the answer, according to Plato, is simple. They are made of dodecahedrons.